tiny houses have been a trend in the US for quite some time now. While some people see them as an unreachable dream, others have set their mind on leaving behind large and sometimes ostentatious residences in favor of smaller, more affordable and sustainable ones. The latter group are those who Tiny House Nation focuses on. Since it premiered in 2014, the show has gone through several off-camera changes. But to build tiny houses that customers want to make the dream home come true is a goal which remains the same. If you were one of those who loyally followed Tiny House Nation while it aired, you're probably worried that it's been a while since we watched a new season premiere on TV. So what happened to the series? Was it cancelled or is it going to return sometime, hopefully soon? Here we relate everything related to the show's whereabouts and its future, so stay with us. It's undeniable that alternative or out of normal lifestyles are common when it comes to reality TV. What feeds people's curiosity about these types of shows is mostly peeking into different strangers' lives without necessarily becoming personally involved with them. This winning formula for TV is what positioned Tiny House Nation as one of the most famous and watched DIY series of its time, setting itself apart from others for not only focusing on renovating or constructing these dwellings, but also giving the audience an exclusive insight into how families and individuals adapt to their new, inevitably small-scale living arrangements. Knowing all of this, it's surprising that we haven't heard anything regarding Tiny House Nation's renewal since 2019, but there's an explanation for it. As it happened, the show aired its first four seasons on the FYI channel and was later moved to the A&E for unknown reasons. This unstable broadcasting situation only worsened when by mid-fifth season, the show left traditional TV to continue airing the rest of its season on Netflix. Supposedly, these changes are speculated to mean that the series was burned off TV, meaning that it was allegedly cancelled before it completely aired, leaving the remaining episodes to be broadcast purely for legal reasons. Although the show's supposed cancellation is accepted as a fact, no news about it ever came from A&E or the show's production company. However, judging by how long it has been since the show aired for the last time, it's safe to assume it's not returning anytime soon. Despite the bad news and the lack of explanation of the show's situation, starting from 2020, Tiny House Nation was syndicated to air on National Geographic. As well, the show's last two seasons are available on Netflix. While this isn't exactly the best news for those waiting to see John Weisbarth and Zach Griffin back on their TV screens, it's at least a relief that the show hasn't been completely forgotten, though it's theorized that Tiny House Nation could have been cut short due to low ratings or a budget shortage. It's speculated that the several legal problems that those who were involved with the series faced over the years potentially caused its unofficial cancellation. As it follows, these are some of the most commented on legal issues related to the show. Out of all the legal misgivings that we know Tiny House Nation has been involved with, the most famous is probably the accusation of stealing someone's house. This goes back to 2018 when Ben and Rebecca Richards contacted contractor Mike Bedsall for the purpose of moving their young family into a little house. Bedsall, who was then a contractor for Tiny House Nation, apparently informed them that by appearing in the show, the production staff would pay for the trailer. Knowing it was a good, money-saving deal, the Richards family accepted the offer, only to later be told that they were obliged to pay for the trailer provided by Bedsall's supplier anyway. Despite the bad news, the couple paid $11,500 to Bedsall in addition to providing him with the necessary documentation to register the house. Fast forward to a couple of months later, and after some problems regarding their participation in the show were sorted out, the Richards house was finally featured in the Tiny House Nation. Nonetheless, after filming wrapped up, the young family couldn't obtain a quote from the contractor for the remaining debt. As they later discovered, Bedsall registered the trailer under his own name, and so the family was forced to move out of it. According to the Richards family, Tiny House Nation's production staff made it clear that they held no responsibility for the incident, leaving the legal issue to be solved between them and Bedsall, although the dispute between the Richards family and Mike Bedsall was apparently never taken to court. Problems didn't end there. As it happened, the fact that the issue involved a famous TV show was enough to quickly attract the media's attention, resulting in an apparent massive backlash against Bedsall. Subsequently, in 2020, Bedsall filed a $250 million lawsuit against two Californian TV channels for defamation. As stated in court papers, stories shared by the stations allegedly implied that Bedsall had committed illegalities related to his dispute with the Richards family, which had ultimately negatively affected his business, Tiny House Chattanooga, and his personal reputation. Meanwhile, defendants argued that their content was meant for audiences in California, and so was out of the jurisdiction of Tennessee, where the case was filed. However, both TV stations 
failed to base the reports on the court documents issued when the Richards were evicted from the trailer in dispute. As the case judge noted, as of late 2021, the case is still in court, but has retained the media's attention for more than its involvement with Tiny House Nation, as it's been deemed a case of infringement of people's freedom of speech. It's also been argued that the case is of general interest due to the public nature of the show. It's worth noting that by appearing in Tiny House Nation, the builder's business usually attracts more recognition, virtually free advertising. However, negative opinions about the work could easily spread, affecting their companies more than it would if they didn't appear in the show. Knowing this, it's understandable why a negative review about builder Charles Brzezinski saw him initiate a million-dollar legal battle. It all dates back to 2016, when Jared Logan and Vanessa Wesley were showcased in an episode of Tiny House Nation's third season. Although nothing wrong was visible on screen, behind the scenes, the homeowners were quite displeased with Brzezinski's work a feeling they openly expressed later on an online review of his business. The couple accused him of unprofessionalism, leaving their house incomplete, with severe, unfixed problems, holding their home hostage until they reviewed his work positively, and even alleging that Brzezinski wasn't legitimately licensed as a contractor, perhaps something that should have been established prior to contracts being signed. Word about Brzezinski's apparently less than favorable work ethic spread, leading him to file a lawsuit against Logan and Wesley demanding $1 million in damages for the alleged negative effect their review had on his reputation. Though it's unknown what the court's final decision for the case was, Brzezinski's business is apparently still active, but negative reviews on his website are numerous. Unfortunately, when it comes to contracts and money, it's only natural for some things to turn out badly. However, it's another thing when serious mistakes happen just a little too often. The latter explains very well the situation with Scott Stewart, one of Tiny House Nation's builders who, despite normally doing a great job on the show, apparently didn't satisfy his off-camera clients. It turns out that Stewart had repeatedly failed to refund many of his customers' commissioned houses. The reason behind his apparent lack of compromise at finishing these projects wasn't revealed, but due to it, at least seven complaints from his former clients were filed from 2014 to 2019 in Colorado, Georgia, California, Arkansas, and New Mexico. As is apparent, the cases hadn't prospered until the Attorney General in Arkansas, Leslie Rutledge, sued him for fraud in 2019. As stated, the lawsuit could prevent him from taking advantage of more customers, whom he'd apparently billed for $115,000 by then. In 2020, Stewart was finally ordered to pay $240,000, split between restitution to his former clients, civil penalties, and fees. There might be little chance of Tiny House Nation ever returning to TV, but that doesn't mean hopes are completely lost. Knowing that, it's understandable that many people want to know how the participants were selected for it, just in case the show ever does return. Judging by the casting requirements the show posted back in the day, applicants should have had over $40,000 to afford the project. It doesn't mention if owning a foundation or a trailer was required. But by reading past participants' shared experiences, the latter was apparently provided by the show. However, Money isn't the only part of the equation. To participate in Tiny House Nation, homeowners must have had a strong will to embrace the tiny housing lifestyle without inconvenience. While this requirement isn't explicitly mentioned, since it should be obvious, it's evidently a strong factor to consider, despite the resource advantages that it provides. As reported by the website Apartment Therapy, tiny houses are not only a matter of adapting to limited spaces, it also entails problems with zone regulations for those who travel with them. In addition to the sometimes expensive costs related to maintenance, moving, and most of all, the possible difficulties that plumbing, piping, and electrics represent for these homeowners. Besides the obvious costs of buying or leasing a foundation or a trailer, improving the latter could mean a financial challenge for many people. As affirmed by Tiny House Nation's hosts John Weisbarth and Zach Griffin years ago, the costs of building your dream tiny house vary depending on what each homeowner wants. The least expensive project presented in the show was $40,000, but both of them had known about other basic projects, which cost $35,000, including design, materials, and workforce. Projects as cheap as $8,000 are possible, though in Weisbarth's words, finishing these depend mainly on the homeowner's disposition of working themselves and obtaining donated materials. Conversely, according to Insider, tiny house prices can be as high as $80,000, depending on the quality of build and rise of demand as of 2021. While these market prices might be warding off the lifestyle from its original affordable premise, it probably also means that those who still wish to adapt to it could level up the DIY home improvement skills for the sake of saving money. John Weisbarth was always the most known face of the show for a reason. Although brief, his career as an actor includes movies such as No Brainer, 
and Mission Irreparable. After debuting in Tiny House Nation in 2014, he moved on to host other shows such as Unplugged Nation and Roadstead Nation. However, it's been so long since we watched new episodes of Tiny House Nation on our TV screens that John has been creating content on other platforms, such as YouTube with his COVID cocktail series. As well, he's active on the Cameo platform, on which his subscribers could enjoy personalized content and videos from him. Recently, John has been involved with the Man and Woman of the Year, a campaign which collects funds in favor of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Knowing how good a professional background Zach Griffin has, it's not a wonder that he led the expert side of the show. Griffin has built several normal sized as well as tiny houses over the years. As well, he's the living proof that the tiny house movement is alive and going strongly, having built his own for ski trips. While there's no information about Zach's return to TV anytime soon, he and John are currently hosting the Operation Tiny House podcast, on which they inform about and discuss several topics related to said housing movement. While that's obviously not the same as Tiny House Nation, fans should be happy to see that both of them are still actively creating content related to it, despite the uncertainty surrounding the show's future. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.